Wow. You're... <laughs> Are you in LeBron? That's, that's LeBron right there. <laughs> Watching people fall is funny. When the last time you really fell? Ho, ho, ho! Like one of those. Ho, no, no! <laughs> hey, Shaq, when you fall during the games, it's the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> hey, you ever see his legs after he fall? <laughs> next time, look, I'm telling y'all, next time y'all watch a game and he fall, this is exactly what he do, look. It's always something stupid, like, he go up to get a rebound, he don't get it, he go, oh, no. LeBron, this is LeBron, look at her, come on, god damn it, Shaq, get your ass, <laughs> shit, man, get up. Oh, I didn't you know, I didn't know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, look, okay, one more, one more. Shaq, this is this how you fall front with, hey, no, oh, God, please. <laughs> Y'all gotta look at the coach face. Y'all don't watch the right shit, man. <laughs> look, this Shaq falling, Mr. Coach. Oh, somebody help his ass up. LeBron, get him up. No, no, no. I pushed him too hard. <laughs> I don't know why I ever got mad at LeBron last year, you know, because he, he went from the most beloved player to the most hated because he left Cleveland and went to Miami. I'm a comedian. I travel every week. I've been to Cleveland, been to Miami. Not a tough decision if you ask me where I want to live. <laughs> That's not asking some dude, hey, man, who'd you rather fuck, Beyonce or Precious? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Beyonce. I'm going to go Beyonce on this one. Yeah, I'll go Beyonce. But Precious Razor, you grew up with Precious. I don't want to fuck Precious no more. <laughs> Saw this documentary on LeBron too called More Than a Game. They had, his, he, they had his high school coach on there and his mom was on there and they said LeBron was raised by a single mother in Akron, Ohio. And then interviewed his high school coach and, Le, and his high school coach was like, you know, if LeBron would have had a dad in his life, his game would be at a whole nother level. I said, I don't think so. I think LeBron's better because he didn't have a dad in his life. Because LeBron's got like a broken home type of game. Because you could tell there's some pent up aggression come from somewhere when he's on the court. Because he'd be dribbling hard, passing hard, dunking hard. Where the fuck is my dad? Mom, shit! God damn! You, know? you ever see Kobe Bryant? Kobe had a mom and dad. Bounce pass, layup. Hey, dad! With just two games left before the playoffs, Kobe Bryant received a technical foul and uttered this phrase after returning to the bench. Now hold on, in Kobe's defense, he was referring to Thai referee Fo Kang Fi Gott. <laughs> Fo Kang Fi Gott. Thailand's most famous referee. Kobe has apologized to the ref and to the NBA and was fined $100,000. He has also told the gay community that he has nothing but respect for them and reminded them that he shares their affection for spirited rounds of anal sex. <laughs> so, so just to review, the gay community was insulted by this guy.
It does seem odd that just a year ago, Kobe was so comfortable with his sexuality that he posed for the Los Angeles Times magazine with this picture. But I guess one photo isn't a big deal. I don't know what the other... Oh! <laughs> Lawrence of Gay Arabia. <laughs> the French lieutenant shooting guard. Now, I don't want a homophobic slur hurled out at me, but uh, who wears white after Labor Day? The Lakers won, dominating fashion. Game six was dominating. Game five, Jimmy Butler did his thing again. Oh, beautiful. And then game six, the Lakers were just not having it. Bron, so, Bron not having it. Bron not having it. Bron said, I'm locking up Jimmy the whole game. Yep. They did their fucking thing. Um, after LeBron and the Lakers win, LeBron is being interviewed by Rachel Nichols or whoever yeah. it is. And he says, I want my respect. I want my damn respect. I want my damn respect too. Yeah, but he, he really just said everybody. respect everybody else so he just could get so to. he could say that. Anybody give a fuck about respect in? What's Rob that? Rob Palinka. Rob Palinka. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Not Rob Lowe. That's all you are to me is not <laughs> Rob is Lowe. not Rob Lowe, dude. Fuck out of here. Nobody respect you. LeBron want his damn respect. Now, why do you think he said that? I think he wants to be the GOAT. I don't think he's there yet. He's not. Do you believe that he believes he is? I do. And then how is he justifying that to himself? So in other words, you're LeBron James. You believe you're the GOAT. You don't have six rings. How are you justifying you're better than Jordan with think, what you've done? I think you always, whatever you do, you have to believe you are a little better than you really are. But, whatever but I'm you saying, do. what do you think he's doing? I think I came back. I never had a Phil Jackson as a coach. I never had a great coach. Gotcha. I don't even know if I've ever, he's ever had a good coach. Spolstra early in his career, but Spolstra wasn't what he is now. Yeah. Then uh, he thinks I never had Scottie Pippen. I had some good teammates, but now I finally got my Pippen. Dwayne Wade was really good that first year. Then when we finally won the championship starting then, he would get hurt every playoffs. Okay. I think he thinks I was around inept ass Cleveland for years where the organization fucks up everything. So, and I came back against arguably the greatest team ever, 73 and 9, is 3 it 1 deficit. Fair to say, your argument is he thinks he did more with less. Yes, well said. Okay. You cut that down way better than I did. I did what you usually do. <laughs> oh, no, no oh, doubt. sick, dude. Yeah, no doubt. Synergy. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, it's humbling, isn't it? Yeah. I hate it when you do that shit it's to me, so even though I love, okay. like, I'll be saying the longest rant, and you just be like, yeah, A plus yeah. B is C. Yeah. <laughs> did I just do math with letters? That's <laughs> 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 why I killed it, too, and then he was like, more with less. I was like, fuck! <laughs> he did more with less. <laughs> so, your point is, more with less, which I think is a great argument. I think there's also something that said... He, to be said with him doing with three different organizations. Mm -hmm. I think people sleep on that. Every new organization you go to, you got to build a new team. Granted, the Bulls built two teams technically, right? Right. But it's the same organization and the same key players. Mm -hmm. LeBron had to go do this again in Cleveland, build the whole team around him again with the Lakers. Yeah. We could say it's easy because you're LeBron and everybody wants to play with you, but it's not that easy. Right. Getting everybody to have the same chemistry, establishing the culture, getting a coach that's going to run the culture that you want to have there. Yeah. It's not like the Lakers have culture. No. Right? The Lakers LA doesn't Kobe. have culture. LA doesn't have culture. No. Right? You, the the Lakers were Kobe, and then when Kobe left, there was just a giant void yeah. mm -hmm. to be filled. Right? Yeah. So I think that's a really interesting argument. And I think that he, and especially with the three one shit, he might go. Nah, I don't think Jordan could do that. And I would agree because I don't think Jordan would let himself go down three one. Right. But that being said, there are there is a solid argument for his goat ship, mm -hmm. if you will. I don't think he's there. Nope. I, agree. I think he's actually two more rings away. Yeah. In in my opinion, I think yeah. in order to be spoken about with Jordan, you need the six. Mm -hmm. but I think as far as our generation goes, he's number two and it's not close. Yeah. I think there used to be close number twos for our generation. We didn't see Wilt. Yeah. We didn't see Bill Russell, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't see those motherfuckers, but we didn't see Kareem. No. We didn't even see Magic. Really didn't see Magic or Bird, really. Or Bird. Yeah. But we saw Kobe, we saw Jordan, and we saw LeBron. And I think that we can all unanimously say number two. Yeah. 
is LeBron. Yeah. yeah. And if that wasn't solidified before, within our generation, again, not the old heads, within our generation, I think this solidifies it. Yeah. I, I did see some shit this week where someone was saying Kobe Bryant had five fucking rings. So if he gets one next year, he gets number six, then you have to say that he's on par with Jordan. As far as championships, yes, we can all do math. But as far as him ever eclipsing Michael Jordan, he never will. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this right now. Not only will he never eclipse Michael Jordan, he's not even fucking close. And I know what all you Laker fans are thinking. But wait a minute, fucker. He's doing the same fucking moves. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Physically, he can do what Michael Jordan can do. Yes, he can. All right? But this is the difference. Michael Jordan created those fucking moves. All right? You can find a guitarist in your fucking neighborhood who can play Voodoo Child. Does that mean they're as good as Jimi Hendrix, who wrote the fucking song, who was 20 years ahead of his fucking any other guitarist on the planet? Look, as great as Stevie Ray Vaughan is, I love that guy to death. He can't touch, he can't fucking touch Jimi Hendrix. He can't. Hendrix came up with that shit. And then fucking Stevie Ray modernized it, but it was Jimmy shit. You know what I mean? It's like a pilot taking learns how to fly and then tries to compare himself to Orville and Wilbur Wright. Oh, they, they, they fucking flew only across the field. I'm flying across the whole country. I'm 3,000 miles better than the people who invented flying. All right? Now, Kobe Bryant has the, the, I think, has the athletic gifts of Michael Jordan. And if you had the two of them play each other one-on-one at the height of their powers, it would be the greatest one-on-one game ever. All right? But as far as the forward thinking, the, the, the athletic genius, Kobe Bryant is not an inventor. He isn't. He does have the drive. He's got all that other shit, but he doesn't have the ability to take the game 20 years into the future where he has no fucking peer. There was no arguments when Jordan played. There was no arguments about who the best guy in the league was for the last 10 years of his career. There was, you know, early on, before he established himself, you know, people, you know, we're throwing other names in there. But after, you know, fucking 89, there was no question who the best player was. And by fucking 92, 93, he was without a doubt the greatest basketball player of all time. And he still is. Kobe Bryant, on the other hand, his entire career, there's always been, well, what about this guy? What about that guy? You know, right now, is he Kobe, LeBron James? You know, I still give it to Kobe. Kobe is still uh, beyond LeBron James, but LeBron James is very close. There was no one near Jordan. I can't even explain it to you. It's like when you talk to those fucking douchebags from the baby boom generation, those selfish cunts who hang their hat on, they stopped the Vietnam War and then became corporate douchebags. Um, That's a big generalization for you. Like, they always say, like, no matter how much you get into the Beatles, you just can't wrap your head around what it was like when they put out an album. How far ahead they were from everybody else. It's the same thing with Richard Pryor, because what happens is, as the years go by, everybody rips those those geniuses off. And everybody gets caught up to where the fuck they were. And what usually happens is, if you're young, you're watching the contemporary people. And then as you go back in time... You go back 30 years, you go all the way back to prior, and you see him do the black guy, white guy thing, and so many people have ripped him off that, that the genius of what he does is, is a little tainted. You know what I mean? So that's like when people look at Kobe, and, and they go back and they look at Jordan, they take for granted what Kobe's doing now because it just seems it just like that's what basketball is now. Because Jordan showed showed him what was possible. You understand what the fuck I'm saying here? I'm sure Laker fans won't fucking they they'll they'll argue it, but they're fucking morons anyways. They're gonna be like Jordan. Kobe's just as good as Jordan. 
You know, the same way they try to claim that they have fucking 16 championships. Or this other douche who wrote me this week who tried to say they have 18. There's such, there's just no way to respect a Laker fan. I just, because so, they just transplanted fucking, there's, there's so few people from Los Angeles. And what happens is people move out there. You know, Hollywood fucking phonies. And then the Lakers, you know, they always have some fucking amazing team. They're a hell of, they're an awesome franchise. I think they're, uh, they're, wait, how many championships they got since 1980? They won five, eight, they've won nine. They're better than the Yankees since 1980. Better than the Canadians. They are the franchise. All right? So all these fucking assholes go out there and they see Jack Nicholas, a, uh, a fucking true fan, Jack Nicholson. What the fuck is wrong with me? Every time I want to say Jack Nicholas, I say Nicholson and vice versa there. God help me if they're ever in the same fucking room. Yo, let me tell you about a story so true. We're showing me style and it's all so cool. It's about a garment torn and frayed. Getting his friends, the story conveyed. Walking down the streets with holes in my teeth. Each rip them here, part of me you see. It ain't about the brand of the label they hold. It's about the journey, the stories it unfolds. In these ragged clothes, I find my voice. A testament to resilience. My choice from the streets to the stage. I rock my style in my tattered shirt. I walk that mile. The torn, but still I stand in my ragged attire. I command it's not just fabric, it's a statement. I preach in my threadbare garment, I find my reach. From the barrio to the bar, I make my mark in my worn out jeans. I leave a spark, and they call it rags, but I call it art. And every stitch and tear, I play my part. It's the struggle of the streets, the hustle so real in my tattered jacket. I seal the deal, a symbol of defiance against the status quo. My passion, the pants, I let it show. It's not about the riches or the wealth I lack in my faded hoodie. I stay on track. It's the heart of the hustle, the grind each day. In my worn out kicks, I find my way. Ripped and torn, but still I stand. In my ragged attire. Command. It's not just fabric, it's a statement I preach. In my threadbare garment, I find my reach. So here's to the ones with the clothes that tear in our patched up attire we have. So let the world see our garments worn. For in our rags, our stories are born. In the language of the streets, we speak. In our torn up clothes, we find our peak. Really, Bill, when the fuck would that happen? Huh? When you do some corporate gig for some people who actually did something with their life and you go in there like a dancing monkey and then afterwards try to talk to them in the green room as they're clearly blowing you off. Um, <clears throat> anyways, the fuck am I talking about here? Yeah, all those douchebag Laker fans. You know, I talked to one the other day like, oh, dude, I'm diehard. I'm diehard. And I found out he was from New York. How the fuck? Do you go from being a Knicks fan to being a Lakers fan? I'll tell you why. You become a fucking phony. How do you leave New York and move to L.A.? How do you do that? You know, unless you're in show business. Which, was he? I think he was. I can't remember. I drank so much this fucking week. All of, everybody's just amalgam. Everybody's just a big, just amalgamating, if that's even a word, into just one big face. <laughs> 